For more information on tutoring or how to support MOOF University and the production of more videos, please visit MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. In 1924, Louis de Broglie thought, if light, which is energy that was classically viewed to be a wave, if light can behave like a particle, then perhaps matter, which was classically viewed to be particle-like, can behave as a wave. So using three equations, we're going to figure this out. Okay. We're going to use c equals lambda nu, which we saw before, speed of light equals lambda, the wavelength times the frequency, and then energy equals Planck's constant times the frequency, and e equals mc squared, which is one of Einstein's, uh, one of the things Einstein's famous for, his famous equation relating energy to mass and the speed of light squared. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use these three equations to, do, to find a new equation that we'll see in a moment. Okay. The first thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to take c equals lambda nu and divide both sides by wavelength. And we will get nu equals c over lambda. So we just solve basically for nu. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to take what we got here for nu, and we're going to plug that in here. We're going to plug that in for nu in the E equals H nu equation. So what that'll give us is that'll give us energy equals H times C over lambda. All we did was plug in C over lambda in for nu. So now we have energy E equals H C over lambda. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this equation and just solve it for wavelength, right? Solve for lambda. So that'll give us lambda equals hc over e. Now, we've solved for wavelength here. And from here, what we're going to do is we're going to replace that e with mc squared. Okay, so we're going to replace e with mc squared because e equals mc squared. And then we get lambda equals hc over mc squared. Now we can cancel one of these c's, one c here, one c here, and that'll give us lambda equals h over mc. So the wavelength is going to equal Planck's constant over mass times the speed of light. But now what de Broglie was doing, basically, is he was, he was trying to develop an equation that could express the wavelength of a particle. So, and, and the particle is not necessarily moving at the speed of light. So what he did was he replaced c with the speed of the particle. Okay, so we're going to replace c with u, which is going to represent the particle's speed. Okay. And so what we get there is lambda equals h over mu. And that might have seemed like a mess, but basically what de Broglie did here is he developed this equation, which he, which is basically for the de Broglie wavelength, okay? which we see here. Okay. So the de Broglie wavelength is lambda, which of course is equal to um, wavelength, is equal to h over mu. So h is Planck's constant, which we know to be 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. M is going to be the particle in question. It's going to be its, its mass. It's going to be the particle's mass, specifically in kilograms. And the reason it has to be in kilograms is because it has to cancel with the joule unit. Because one joule, one joule equals one kilogram times meter squared per second squared can't express how important this is to remember. Okay. So the particle's mass needs to be in kilograms. U is the particle's speed, and specifically in meters per second, again, for the units to cancel. And then lambda is, is going to be the particle's de Broglie wavelength in meters. So what's happening here is de Broglie basically measure, or he made an equation that allows you to find the wavelength of a particle. 
which is kind of weird, right? Because that's that's assuming that matter is acting like a wave. Okay. So um, one thing to notice here in this equation is that um, things with large masses, right? Massive objects. Let's write this in in white. Massive objects, which are things with, of course, a large mass, have very short wavelengths. Because if you increase the mass here, the wavelength will get smaller, right? Because you're dividing by a bigger number. Okay. So large, large objects, things with large masses, have um, short wavelengths. Okay. So let's use this equation to, for a practice problem here. So if we're asked to find the wavelength of an electron moving at a speed of 2.0 times 10 to the 6 meters per second, the mass of an electron is given as 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. Okay, find the wavelength. So that's lambda there. They want us to find lambda. So the, the equation is already solved for lambda, so we don't have to manipulate it. Wavelength of an electron moving at a speed of this. So this, this here is u, and it's already in meters per second, so we don't have to change that. And the mass of an electron here is, is the mass of the object, so a mass of an electron. That's going to be our m. And that is here, and it's already in kilograms, so we don't have to change anything there. So for this, we just plug and chug. H is a constant. That's Planck's constant. So it's 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34. Now, I'm not going to write joules times seconds. I'm going to write it as 1 kilogram times meter squared per second squared times seconds, because that whole portion there is a joule. So kilogram times meter squared per second squared times seconds. Okay. And again, that's because this part here is a joule. Right. Those are the units for joule. So that's H on top. And on the bottom here, we're going to have the mass in kilograms. So that will be 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. And the particle speed is given to us as 2.0 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. Okay. So now, how are these units going to cancel? Just to break it down, what's going to happen here is that we're going to put all the units that are on top here, and then all the units that are on the bottom here. So kilograms is on top in the numerator, so it goes there. So is meters squared, so that goes there. And so is seconds, so I'll put that there. Okay. Now a second squared here is at the bottom, so I have to be sure to put that in the denominator. Kilograms here is on the bottom, so I'm going to write kilograms in the, in the denominator. Meters here is in the bottom as well. But the second is in the denominator in the denominator. So that's one o this is basically 1 over 1 over s, which means that this s is going to come up here. And this second squared here from, from the numerator is going down. So that's going to be down here. So how do these units cancel? The kilograms cancel. One of these meters cancel. And then the seconds times seconds on top cancels with the second squared. And all we're left with is meters. So we get the wavelength in meters. So if we multiply that all out and all those units cancel, we get 3.64 times 10 to the negative 10 meters. So what is this? This is the wavelength of a particle, specifically the wavelength of an electron moving at this particular speed. This is the wavelength, the de Broglie wavelength, of an electron moving at this speed. right? So it's the wavelength of a particle. Okay, which is kind of a weird concept, right? Particles act behaving as waves. Okay, so electrons do have a wave nature, which is kind of crazy. Okay, also since we're talking about the wave nature of electrons, these two these two people, Davison and Germer, these two, they showed that electrons have diffraction patterns, and typically waves are have diff diffraction patterns. Particles don't. So diffraction patterns, if something has diffraction patterns or shows diffraction patterns, it's, that's a wave property. So electrons have a wave nature. And if we could find their wavelength using this equation. So I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you, and happy studying.